Good morning. Good to have you with us today. We're coming to you from what is the bright light Zion Lutheran Church today. Uh, the light's so bright here it's going to hurt your eyes. But don't worry, I'm sure you all have your eclipse glasses ready. Yes. At 3 o'clock after 3 o'clock Monday. Don't look at the sun, it'll hurt your eyes. Don't do that. Use those glasses and we're going to be just out of the totality area, but I expect we'll still, still see some things. We welcome you to church today. We have wonderful service planned for you. And we'll begin with just a few announcements Dave has, and we can bring the mic around as we need to. I'd like to add Janet Ireland to the prayer request. Um, she sprained a couple ankles. I guess she only has a couple, but she sprained both of them. And um, although he's not here today, we should celebrate Stan Escott's birthday today, his 90th birthday today. So, Stan, if you're watching, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Stan, from your friends at Zion. Other announcements today? Yes, Lynn. Uh, my daughter's father-in-law is going to be having some major surgery on the 18th. So if you could pray for uh, Tootie is his nickname. Tootie? Pray for Tootie? Major surgery for Tootie. Tootie Shaver. Tootie Shaver. That's a good name. Well, his name is Arthur, and his younger brother couldn't say Arthur, and he started calling him Tootie. Arthur stopped. Tootie Shawty. Okay. <laughs> Keep him, keep him in prayers. I want to read the prelude here today, and then we'll hear one. It says, the Easter season is a week of weeks, seven Sundays, when we play in the mystery of Christ's presence, mostly through the glorious gospel of John. Today, we gather with the disciples on the first Easter, and Jesus breathes the Spirit on us. With Thomas, we ask for a sign. And Jesus offers us his wounded self in the broken bread. From frightened individuals, we are transformed into a community of open doors, peace, forgiveness, and material sharing such that no one among us is in need. Let's prepare our hearts for worship then with the prelude. Come ye faithful, raise the strain. Alan?
wonderful, wonderful. We'll give thanksgiving of our baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. In measured in the, immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is water of life. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is Please rise as you're able and join me in our gathering hymn, That Easter Day with Joy Was Bright, number 384, number 384. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Amen. Please be seated.
in the prayer of the day, please. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Deb will bring our lessons. The first reading is from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And we'll read Psalm 133 responsively. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the dew of Hermon flowing down upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. The Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 20, 19 through 31. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. O Christ.
things are a little different today. I switched the order again. We started our worship today remembering our baptism. <coughs> when we read those words, did they conjure in your mind? Shouldn't use the word conjure in church. That would be magic, wouldn't it? Did they recall to your memory stories you've heard about water? Well, they did in mine, but I've been at this a while. And so for those of you who are new, everything we do here refers to something in Scripture. We remember our baptism. We remember the beautiful light of that first Easter day. And that reading in Acts, when everyone sold everything they had so people would have enough, they, they thought Jesus was coming back again next week. And they wouldn't need their lands. They wouldn't need to make food anymore or cattle. It was all going to be taken care of. And as my one professor, Bob Bowman, said, after a while they figured out he was delayed and they'd better keep working and get busy and save some money so they could help each other. And that wonderful Psalm 133 of Aaron, it goes way back to when Israel was united and Aaron was the priest and he stood on Mount Hermon praising God and the sun shone through the window on, on his beard and the oil was running down. And, and, and so when Christ rose from the dead, he put things back together and made them even better for the disciples because of his resurrection. And then there's that story about Thomas. Blessed are they who uh, haven't seen and, and yet believe. Oh, golly, that's good stuff. I was going to talk about sin and forgiveness today. I really was. But I'm not that deep. How could sins that I fail to forgive go unforgiven when Christ forgives all sin? So I, I couldn't do that. What I decided to do was tell a little story. And Bonnie, I'm sorry we're missing you, but this is an, of an adult nature today. Some of you came to church today and I asked you, who are some famous co comedians, teams of comedians? And, and what did you say? Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. Laurel, Laurel and Hardy. Red Skelton. Red Skelton, yes. Uh, how about Bing Crosby and Bob Hope? Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. You see, I knew I had the right crowd because nobody said Beavis and Butthead. Oh, but you had to go to those movies, haven't you? Um, today, I, I want to talk to you about Cheech and Chong a little bit. Yeah. Cheech and Chong. And, and, uh, but we're debuting a new comedy routine, Lynn and the Loser. Would you come forward, please, and help me with this little story? <coughs> I think we have room here for both of us. Okay. This is an original script based on things that happened in the Bible. Oh, like, oh, I can use your copy, can yeah. I? Okay. Well, imagine, if you will, a basket of Twinkies on the communion rail. Uh, imagine, if you will, a bottle of Matus wine with a candle in it, remember? Dripping over the edges, and, and you're, you're a younger person. Uh, the key scripture is, they ate their bread with glad and generous hearts, the main idea is share your bread, and without further ado, Lynn and the Loser. <laughs> hey, man, you got any bread? Said one hippie to another. No, man, I got no bread, but I hear there's some down at the Zion Church. Man, they've got a food pantry down there. Cool, you think they'll share any of their bread with us? Sure, gal, they'll share their bread with us. They're real glad handers down there at Zion why they have a free meal every other Tuesday. Far out, man. I think I'll head down there to score me some bread. Thanks, nope. man. <laughs> no problem, gal. They told me there to tell everybody that there's plenty of bread for everybody down at the chapel, down at Zion Lutheran Church. They call it Jesus bread. But wait, it gets better. They're passing out wine, too. First you get the bread, then they give you the wine. They say that if you eat this bread and drink this wine, you'll live forever. Heck, they'll even clean up your mess after you, too. It's a real meal deal. Wow, man. That 
It's the best deal in town. Why? Why did they do it? The folks at Zion say that this Jesus cat, who they call the Messiah, told them to go tell everybody that he's alive. And they're to share their bread with anybody who needs any. Cool beans. Share and share alike. All because Jesus said so. That's far out, man. Sounds too good to be true, but I'll go check it out. Thanks. No problem, friend. They call it the way to live, too. Sharing Jesus Christ for life. See ya. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've contextualized that now, haven't we? Well, let's see. A man came into my office the other day, uh, and he asked me a question. People come in and ask you questions all the time. He said, suppose I was at the supermarket, and a young mother had a very small child in the seat of her shopping cart. The cart was full of groceries and cleaning supplies, just normal household needs. When the clerk rang up her items, the total bill was $120. The young mother only had a hundred dollars. She looked around a bit, I suppose, for someone she knew or someone she hoped would come forward and offer to pay the other twenty dollars. My question is this. If I don't pay the twenty dollars, would I be committing a sin of omission by not helping her out of her problem? Would it be all right if I suggested that she remove some of the items so that she could pay her own bill? What should I do, Pastor, in a situation like that? Well, friends of Zion, what does your heart say? What does the Bible say? Well, we're going to look at that lection that I put out of place today in 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through chapter 2, verse 2, and see what we can glean from what the Bible might say that would guide our decision. And so this is uh, from the epistle of John. And, and the other thing you need to know is, is when Jesus rose from the dead, it cast the whole Old Testament in a new light because the prophecies were fulfilled. And that light guided then the people who had received the gospel to look at life in a whole nother way. And so John was there when Jesus rode from the dead and he was the last apostle to die, we believe. And so his letters, in my mind, carry a lot of weight because John was there to see what Jesus did and his words might guide what we're to do. So John says, we declare to you what was from the beginning. Put your finger right there. Beginning, Genesis. What we have heard and what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. Now that'd be Jesus. But you all know as good Lutherans that Martin Luther said, the gospel, the Bible holds Christ as sure as the cradle did. This life, then, that was with us in the beginning was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it and declared to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be full. Other translations would say complete. And when we who've been at this following Jesus a while can hear the words of liturgy and worship and it stirs in our minds something we've learned and we have the complete story, you might say. We're very thankful for those who took the time when we were little kids in the basement of the church and dancing on the tables and not paying attention at all that they stayed at it to teach us. Then Apostle John says, this is the message we have heard from him, capital H-I-M. 
and proclaim to you that God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we're walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Put your finger right there. She was wanting to buy cleaning supplies along with her food so she could clean her house. In a little while, friends, we'll have some real food, but it's a great supply of cleanliness for soiled souls, don't you think? We wouldn't want to do without that in our cart now, would we? If we say we've not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Word of God, word of life. Well, friends, what about that $20? Think about this before you decide. I, I can't do much about the wars in the world, in Ukraine, in Israel, in Gaza, or anywhere. I can't decide the outcome of the next election. It's all over the news, friends. Everywhere you look is not good. But I can, with God's help, decide what to do with the $20 in my pocket when I see a need in front of me. When we don't know what to do, we can look to our advocate. Now that word in scripture, advocate, is derived from the Greek word paraclete, or parakletos, which is a descriptor of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's one who comes alongside us. Uh, we can look to what I call Pete the paraclete, it's a parrot who mimics what he hears God say. Stay with me here. If we'll look to Pete the paraclete, we can discover what to do. The paracletos is described as one who comes alongside of us, a trusted advisor. Uh, that's who you call for elder law information. What do I do with what I have to preserve it so it can keep giving and giving and giving? Uh, that parakletos is one who indwells us. It's an internal guidance counselor, so to speak, who advocates for us with God and through whom we receive power and wisdom, direction, guidance, gifts, and willingness to do the things of God. We can look to our advocate to get an answer. Is that $20 burning a hole in your pocket yet? The Bible says that Apostle John wrote down this message from God and delivered it to the church so that by following the word of God and our advocate, the paraclete, that John's joy and the joy of others and our joy would be complete, that our joy would be full. Let me put my finger right there. I had uh, two funerals yesterday. Uh, the easiest ones are the 91-year-old mothers who are much beloved. But her children spoke of the things they'd learned from their mother. Very touching. We buried their father two months ago. They had similar stories. The second funeral was for a, a six-month-old little baby that didn't make it. 
and uh, only lived two hours. But the baby's mother was in our youth group years ago. She's 22 now. And uh, you could see her eyes light up when I talked about Jesus and heaven and how her child sits on his lap because Jesus wants to make it easy for the children to come to him. And my joy was full because I realized she retained some of the story, some of the hope in a day of deep grief. So now what about that $20? Friends, only God knows what you're going to do with that $20. But I'm hoping that her need will be met from somewhere. I'm hoping that she'll have a smile on her face as she leaves the supermarket with a cart full and maybe even overflowing than what she picked out. I pray she'll know some joy when she leaves that store. And I'm praying that others will know some joy too, the joy of giving. It comes down to this, is it a sin of omission that we're gonna do or follow the great commission? I realize I'm introducing another theme, but I sit at Zion Lutheran Church where you obviously by now know that the great commission is to go and make disciples of all nations. How do we teach people what to do? Well, we model for them what to do. I have an older congregation in my other job, and they say, don't tell me what to do, JP. Show me. And so this congregation surely shows the town uh, <laughs> once a month at least to give food and with your various acts of charity that you each perform individually, you're teaching people how to give. I'm not worried about this place and the sin of commission or the Great Commission. I know what you'll do. And if I needed 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 60, 82, 20, 40, 60, 340, 60, I'll kick in and we'll give another. We could get 400 bucks today, I'm pretty sure before we left, if there was a real need. Couldn't we? So, I'm counting on Christ, and I know Christ is counting on me that our joy may be filled. My mama used to say, JP, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. Oh, this is a good hymn today. Number 635, We Walk by Faith. Please stand and share 635, We Walk by Faith.
We'll continue with the Apostles' Creed. <coughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us, your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed, and we witness to your love, God of grace. Your, your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace. Your your world cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person, that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace. Yeah. Your children cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to racism and other oppression, and for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain, especially those on our current prayer list. Dan Spiker, Robbie and Steve Rohr, Peter Siddons, Norma Burke, Jan Root, Jim Burdett, Todd and Linda, Tony Rogers, Craig, Stephanie, Jane Ann Airgood, Joyce O'Brien, Denise Rohr. Nancy Shunnefield, Earl McKinley, Jack Williams, Peggy Gilbert, Linda Hampton, Marie Bettenickham, Joanne Betcher, Nancy Coble, Lois Dowd, Phyllis Working, Darlene Shear, Faith Miller, John Frieden, John Fairfield, Amy Fry Miller, and for Tootie, who is uh, Lynn Metzger's daughter's father-in-law. And for those who suffer from war, including the people of Ukraine, the Palestinians of Gaza, and the people of Israel, especially those taken hostage, and the strength and discernment for the people of Zion Lutheran Church, God of grace. Your congregations cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, and other staff, administrators, and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. God of grace. Accept our gratitude, O oh God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. Grant us your peace amid our fears. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. Now each week I, that I'm here, I put my little offering on this envelope that you so gratefully provide and uh, I'm honored to be able to serve you and we want to thank all of you present and those at home for what you send in to enable this work to continue. Join me in the offering <coughs> prayer, won't you please? <coughs> Risen One, 
You call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Words of the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to praise you, almighty and most merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with the earth and sea and all their creatures and with the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Jesus was betrayed, our Lord took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he gave thanks. He took the cup, lifted it heavenward, and gave thanks for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant. In my blood, shed for you all and all the people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the Lord's Prayer as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at the good Lord's table.
Shepherding God, you have prepared a table for us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Please arise with me and, oh, wait a minute, the blessing. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of an ending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Now our sending him, number 548, rise, O church, like Christ arisen. Rise, O church, like Christ arisen. I almost made it. people you've been to church now go be the church but we'll use this dismissal alleluia go in peace rejoice and be glad 
Thanks be to God. Send us off, Alan, with the prelude. Oh.